So, Coach Perry, let's talk about the 22-23 season. Um, so, having last year under your belt, last year was quirky. Yeah. We had, you know, COVID restrictions and, uh, you know, losing out on games because of COVID guidelines and stuff like that. So, you know, having your first year under your belt and under those times, talk about, you know, the transition in this year and what you're looking forward to this season. Uh, well, the, the transition uh, after the season, things settled in, uh, give us a chance to focus, uh, uh, focus on recruiting and really take the time and try to get the right pieces that are best fits for, for UOP, for Pacific, and, and for um, our staff here, and most importantly, probably for this conference. Um, so we took a lot of time with that, and we, were, we felt, or I feel, that our staff did an amazing job, along with our returning players um, combined, did an amazing job in um, making our recruits feel um, at home, feel welcome, feel wanted, and helping them to understand their fit um, here at UOP in Stockton um, and in the West Coast Conference. Um, so those things um, left us really excited when we were done. Um, and then we got, we had the summer, um, so everyone's on campus. Guys get a, get a chance to um, get acclimated to what it's like to be around campus. Um, and take a few classes and, and then get in the gym and kind of get to know me. And that takes time. You know, there's, there's eight new guys. Um, conventional wisdom tells you that it's going to take a second. Like, they're not just going to flip a switch um, and, and be ranked number one in the country. But um, your competitive side looks at this group and says, we can do some things. Um, we can do some things sooner rather than later. Um, and with that being said, the kids have been great. They've been fun to be around. Um, they've been fun to watch compete. Uh, really feel like we, our competitive spirit um, is at a, a very high um, spectrum right now. And, um, you know, the, these guys get after it. Uh, and and they're, they're itching to, uh, to start the season. So um, we'll have some, some points in the season where we're still figuring out what combinations work well, which ones don't. Um, but the thing that I'm most pleased with is our depth. Uh, we really feel like, you know, we have enough players to truly play you know, um, a, a lot of guys on a given, on a given night, and, and that, can pro, pro, that can pose problems for um, our opponents um, because the, usually the deeper you get into your bench, um, the less comfortable the coach feels. Um, but for us, the better we feel. Um, you know, there, there are certain practices where you can't tell who would be the starting five and, and who would be the second five. And, and that means you're really competitive. You touched on how important the recruiting process was. Yes. And how vital your returners were. Mm -hmm. Talking with two of your returners mm -hmm. and talking with two of your transfer, mm -hmm. transfers, they all kind of touched on the culture that they're building. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the transfers touched on trusting you mm -hmm. and and before they got here that's mm -hmm. what they had to do mm -hmm. was they had to build that trust with you mm -hmm. and now that they're here it's about the culture with the team mm -hmm. how has it been for you to see that eight new guys is no yeah. small amount so no. to see that grow you know bringing them in it's it's been really cool um i i think the word culture is uh used so much it's turned into a cliche what does it really mean um, so the culture is their relationships with each other their relationships with the staff their relationships with students on campus their relationships with professors um, their relationship with administration um, that's a culture that because that encompasses everybody they don't just wake up and they're with me 24 hours. That's, that's not a culture. Um, that's more like a parent and a child. Um, that's not the case when you talk about culture. Um, cultures are in locker rooms. Cultures are behaviors when 
authority figures are not around. So how do you, how do you act? Who are you really when um, there's, there's no supervision? And it's been really neat watching them um, develop into these roles and understand the things that they will fight for and tolerate as a team and the things that they will not tolerate as a team. That's culture. Um, so when things are going great, usually cultures are great. But the minute um, things get a little bumpy, which is life, um, which is the course of a season, um, everything's not going to go perfect. Very few teams go 33-0. and 0. That's hard to do. So when things get bumpy, um, other teams go on a 10-0 run, um, where are we? Are we, are we finger pointing? Um, are we galvanizing? Um, are, we, are we steady? Um, do, we, do we keep pounding the rock? Or do we just throw the hammer away and just say we, we're not going to be able to crack the rock? Um, and to watch them build uh, what we think is a great framework work and, and, you know, one guy hold the chisel and, and one guy pound away at the rock because, as, as everyone knows, it's not the first one or two blows. It's about the thousandth blow that cracks the boulder. So um, they're developing that. Um, they're still learning it. Um, we're we're going to have to go through some, you know, some adversity. And I think that'll build, um, you know, our quote unquote cult culture. But I think we have the right pieces um, to be effective and, and play our best basketball towards the end of the year. And speaking of having the right pieces, uh, the leaders you've selected on your team this year, um, Luke, Greg, Donovan, Tyler? Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct. So tell me kind of about, you know, the decision behind those four. You know, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure that those are the only leaders. Um, those are the four guys early um, that we feel comfortable with saying that they do the right things on a daily basis um, every day. And we have, certainly we have many other kids that do the same thing. Um, you know, we had to come up with, with uh, a, a group that we would present as a leadership council. And I feel comfortable right now going to our team saying, hey, this is the conundrum. What do you guys think? Talk it over, come out and let me know. And I feel comfortable with their decision. Um, those four in particular, they're everyday guys. They're everyday there. We have practice in the morning, I know what I'm getting. We have practice in the evening, I know what I'm getting. We have practice twice a day, I know exactly what I'm getting. Um, so I can hang my hat on the fact that, you know, those four are receptive to coaching. Um, they'll, they'll play hard, they'll compete, they'll hold their teammates accountable, um, and they'll try and execute what we're trying to do. So the transfers that you have coming in, um, Donovan actually touched on uh, his experience with the transfer portal mm -hmm. and, and how that was. And I think a lot of people on the outside, fans or you know, um, people who might consider themselves basketball experts, look at the transfer portal and what it offers now. And it is this great, big, wide open experience. Yeah. He gave us his perspective mm -hmm. as someone who recruited multiple transfers this year. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what that was like and, you know, why you went after the guys you went after. Well, we were selective. Um, we, we really wanted guys, n number one, that were competitive, that were naturally competitive, that really were in love with the game. Um, the, the game really meant something to them. So you didn't have to call the guy and say, are you in the gym? Are you working on this? Are you? Working? You have to pull these guys off the gym. Um, they they love being in the gym. Um, in our business, there are a lot of guys out here that are really gifted, but don't necessarily love. They don't play for the love of the game. And we wanted a collection of guys that just were in love with the game. Still, with all the outside entities that go with it, they they still wake up and, and love competing love playing, um, would rather be nowhere else but in a gym if they could help it on a, on a day when they had nothing else to do. So that was, that was really important. Uh, we focused on that. Um, and then the second piece was we really wanted, we were really interested in guys once we reached out and made contact with them, 
we were really interested in people who were really interested in us. Um, we wanted guys who were really excited about Pacific, Stockton, the West Coast Conference, um, competing at a high level here at this school, continuing on um, the tradition that is so proud here at UOP. And um, that was our sale. Like, so there were many kids that we talked to um, that, well, you know, um, do, you, do you have a, a private jet? Do, do you have, um, you know, do, do, you, do, you, do you have a NIL? Or do you have, and we were just, we were easy and comfortable with ourselves and saying, no, and we don't think this is the place for you. Um, we wish you the best and, and we'll keep moving. Um, and that's what this process was about. The portal is the portal. Um, for the near future, it's not changing. So you had better adjust and adapt. And we used it. We feel like we used it to our advantage. Um, we added the right pieces um, for us. And um, we felt like it was good to us. Um, we, we think we got the right, the right guys um, from the portal. And uh, their experiences in the portal will all be different. But uh, for us, we, we took our time and, you know, we, we made sure. We, and, and let me say this about the portal as well. The whole purpose of it for us is you, you've, got to, you've got to remain old in this business. This will sound kind of crazy to non-basketball people, but you, you, you need to get old as fast and as long as you can. Um, you can do it with all young guys, but boy, it's tough. Number one, um, if those young kids are great, um, the high majors come in and say, we'll offer you X amount of dollars for an NIL deal. Um, they just come and poach them. Um, and coupled along with that, you're going to take a pounding in this league. Um, you can, it, it, it is not kind um, to, to young guys. But if you can, if you can withstand it, um, eventually you're going to be really good because you're getting old. Um, so we use the portal to keep experience. Um, we need experience. Guys that have seen some things, guys that have a few scratches on their backs. They, they've, they've, uh, they've woken up and, and had to knuckle, you know, knuckle it up. Um, and, and they're going to come into this league, and it'll be jarring a little bit, but they'll get used to the, the competition of having to compete every day at a high level, and, and we wanted to keep that. So um, Greg and Luke were able to speak about the fact that, you know, they've seen the Spano Center full. Yeah. They've seen the Spano Center empty yeah. when we have our COVID restrictions. Yeah. They know the potential of this place. They know the potential of yes. the fans. Yes. And I also asked, you know, Jordan Donovan, what they would like to tell the fans about, you know, as players that the fans haven't got to see them yet. Yeah. And really, all four of them kind of touched on the fact that they think that, one, especially with preseason rankings, y'all are underdogs. Yeah. And there's not expectations right now, and they mm -hmm. all think that y'all are going to surprise a lot of people. But they also said that you're fun and you guys are going to be an exciting team to watch. Do you agree with that? I do. I do. Um, on a given night, you know, when we've got it going, these guys are, they're, they're capable of scoring 100 points. Um, and that's not easy to do and on the men's side. Um, you, you have such a wide variety of talent and skill. On a given night, your seventh man off the bench could be your leading scorer. Um, I know it's cliche for head coaches. We want to play fast. We want to... Hey, all coaches say that. They all say if the guy gets a job, he gets in front of the camera like, here's the thing we're going to do. We're going to play really fast. We're gonna... Then the season starts. He goes, whoa, 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 slow down here. Um, we want to play as fast as, as our talent will take us. And I'm going to keep pounding on it. And I've actually seen times in practice where um, probably the average coach would be okay with things slowing down. And, and I'm I got my foot on the gas saying faster, faster, faster. Um, we we want to put our kids in position to get cheap baskets um, with, with defenses that are struggling to get back. So um, that and the fact that this is the University of Pacific. Um, we're in Stockton, California. Um, th there aren't very many 
other, other things that you can be doing here in Stockton to get more bang for your buck if you're going to go out and do something. And you go out, you have some dinner here, um, make sure it's early, um, and come to Spanos Center and watch good basketball from talented kids that are doing well in school and good people. Um, it's, it's our local school. It's something to root for. Um, this is the WCC Conference. Um, you're not going to find better basketball anywhere in this radius. Um, I know there's some Sacramento Kings fans, but a lot of you can't afford to go down to the Golden One and have season tickets. That, that's a long way away. You got gas. You, but right here, you're in Stockton, right here. Come on out. There's nothing else to do. Um, get behind this team. You can make it a special place. Um, our goal, one of our goals this year is to go undefeated at home. We cannot do it unless you're in the stands. Don't just buy the tickets. Come to the game. Um, this group is, is still getting to know itself, and uh, I, I truly believe that, um, that this group will be a group that will fight to the very end. Um, every night they'll compete to the very end until the horn goes off. And I, I think that there are going to be nights where you know, things aren't going our way, and they're going to claw their way back into these games, and, and they're going to win those games. Um, they're going to find a way um, to keep competing and win those games. They will not, they will not just, just call it a day and say we gave it our best. Um, they'll, this team will, will, will compete um, you know, at, the, at the highest level. I, I really believe that. And At the end of the year, I, I think we could be um, you know, a team that, one, nobody wants to play, and two, um, they could go on a run that like we haven't had here in a while.